Good morning. Welcome to Hamlin Church. I'm Pastor Mariah Furness Tolgard, and I am so glad that you have joined us for online worship today. This morning, we celebrate Pride Sunday. Hamlin Church has been a reconciling congregation in the United Methodist Church for over 20 years. We give thanks and celebrate the gifts and graces of our LGBTQIA siblings in Christ and continue our commitment to work for full inclusion in our church and in society for all people. I am so glad that you have tuned in for this wonderful service today. We are featuring the voices of many of the leaders of our congregation, including Sharon Fields, a lay servant and lay speaker who will share our message this morning. If this is your first time tuning in for worship with us, thank you. Thank you for being here. We're so glad that you are trying us out. A couple of tips as we begin today. Uh, the worship guide is available. It'll be posted in the comments section if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, as well as on our website if you're watching there. There you can follow along with the order of worship as well as see some of the upcoming events for the week. Also, we would love it if you would share this on Facebook or like it and let folks know that you have tuned in for Worship with Hamlin Church this morning. Perhaps start a watch party or uh, just send this as an email to a friend who you think might enjoy today's service. Throughout the service, we would love to chat with you in the chat section. Just uh, type in any prayer requests. We'd love for you to say good morning and let us know that you're out there and are will also be on hand to answer any tech questions that you may have. Friends, let us center our hearts for prayer and thanksgiving. Let us worship together. People sometimes ask, is pride a protest or a party? The answer is, of course, yes. And why not? Why not rejoice as we resist, dance as we demand change, celebrate as we create community, community that delights in all of who we are. So bring all of that with you this morning. Bring your policy demands, bring your glitter, bring your anger for healthcare and justice, bring your rainbow socks, bring the emptiness you feel for our siblings gone too soon. Bring your Gloria Estefan remix, bring your tender hope for change, bring your most garish eyeshadow, Bring your spirit, tattered and battered by a world that seems insistent on choosing fear and hate. Gather up all these things and bring them here to a space where we don't have to shoulder these burdens and celebrate these joys alone. Come, let us worship together.
Good morning, Hamlin Church kids. Thank you for joining us for worship today. I am coming to you this morning from one of my favorite places in the church, and I think it's one of yours too. I'm up in the balc back balcony of the sanctuary, and I know that you guys like to come up here to hide during zombie tag, or maybe come up just to relax or have a quiet moment. I like to come up here because it's a great place to see all of the stained glass windows in the church. And I know many of you and many folks love the stained glass windows at, here at this church because they are so beautiful. I've been thinking about them this week because they also tell stories. These windows tell the stories of the people of God, stories of the people of faith, our ancestors in faith, of those who have gone before us and whose stories are captured in the Bible. Stories like some of the prophets we've been hearing from during the course of this month, as well as people like the disciples and Jesus and Mary and many other folks. And in these beautiful windows, we see many different people and many beautiful colors, all the colors of the rainbow. I know many people are really missing being able to worship in this space and see these windows on a regular basis. But I've also been wondering, you know, if we were to make a window today that describe what it's like to be the people of God in this time during the pandemic, what would that window look like? And I'm wondering if you have some ideas, maybe you can type it into the chat or maybe uh, your grown up can type it in for you or send me a message and let me know. Maybe there would be things like a computer screen to show that we're worshiping online or having school online. Maybe there would be a face mask or a picture of somebody washing their hands. And it's funny how in these past couple months, some of these things have come to be symbols of what it means to be caring for and loving our neighbors right now. But it's also the faithful story of God's people in this time and place. Another story that we often tell at Hamlin Church is one that we tell through our rainbow flag. Many of you know that we have a rainbow flag in our sanctuary as well as in the front of our church and in the back of our church. And that helps to tell our story and tell God's story that all people are beloved by God and that Hamlin Church is a place that welcomes all people and works for justice and liberation for all God's children, and that we celebrate the many different ways that God has created us, especially this month and in this worship service, we celebrate our LGBTQIA siblings in Christ and all of the many gifts and graces that they bring to the church. So think about in this coming week, what stories that will be told about you as you live out your faith right now, as you care for your family, as you show love to your neighbors, as we do our best to help one another and to stand for justice and to work for greater equality and liberation in our world. Because we are the next part of this story. Let us pray together. Gracious God, Thank you for creating us as your people. Thank you for using us to bless the world. Help us to be a part of your unfolding story, just as the people of faith who are contained in these windows have been for the past. Help us to do that work here and now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Friends, will you pray with me? Creator God, gracious Lord, maker of all there is and ever will be, today we come to you in glorious celebration as we are reminded of how beautifully blessed in diversity our world is. On this Pride Sunday, we rejoice in our identity and who you created us to be. May we revel in our queer and trans identity, truly trusting the sacredness of what they are. 
For it is you who created them, you who birthed the wonderful spectrum of genders and sexualities, you who gave us so many ways to, for us to love and for us to be. And all that comes from you is indeed good. God, I thank you for each and every one of our gay, lesbian, bisexual, pansexual, queer siblings. I thank you for their presence in this world and the joy they bring. They are made in your image. God, I thank you for all of our trans and non-binary siblings. Their presence is a gift to the world and they are made in your image. I thank you, Holy Lord, for all of the ways that you have enabled us to see you reflected in us and all the ways you have given us to reflect your presence back into the world. May we always honor our diversity, the sacredness of our diversity, and the sacredness of the queer and trans folk in this world. Holy God, we come to you using the words you gave us when you taught us to pray. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading is taken from Amos chapter 5, verse 4 and verse 10 through 17. This is what the Lord says to Israel, Seek me and live. There are those who hate the one who uphold justice in the in court, detest the one who tells the truth. You will levy a straw tax on the poor and impose a tax on their grain. Therefore, you have built stone mansions, and you will not live in them. Though you planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offense, and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and bribe the deprived, the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent keep quiet in such times, for the times are evil. Seek God, not evil, that you may live then. The Lord's God Almighty will be with you. Just say, just as you say he is, hate evil, love good. Maintain justice in the courts, perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the Lord God Almighty says there. We'll be wailing in the streets and cries of the ungish in every public. Square the farmers will be summoned, we weep, and the mourners too. Well, there will be wailing in the vineyards, for I will pass through midst. Say the Lord, Lord, you have words and eternal life. I adore you, I praise you, and thank you for the gift of scripture. Amen. Hello, Halfland Church, and happy Pride Sunday. I'm Sharon Fields and I'm very glad to be delivering the message today. Let me welcome each of you, whether this is a, your first time or you've been a member for 90 years. Thank you for joining worship. A few weeks ago, Pastor Mariah asked me to give the message for Pride Sunday. When I opened her mail, I must admit, I chuckled. See, a few years ago, Mariah was asking for volunteers during the service at Pride, and I recall telling her, rather adamantly, uh, that you'll not find me in church during Pride. See, that sacred family time will be at the parade. 
clearly this year our Pride Parade weekend plans have changed. In the email asking me to talk to today, Mariah explained this sermon series is about prophetic voices, voices that focus on the minor prophets that ask, pick a minor prophet and let me know what the scripture will be. Without second thought, I knew. We'll get to that in a moment. <clears throat> now recall, minor here doesn't mean less than. It means these prophets wrote smaller books, but what they have to say is just as powerful and meaningful as some of the better known prophets. In March, I had my final interview to become a certified lay speaker. The team performing the interview sent us questions beforehand so we could be ready. The last question they asked, you have one sermon to preach. It encompasses what you believe most important about God and the Christian life. What would be your sermon and why? My pedestrian answer was that Christ died for our sins no matter who we are and what we've done. A message I truly believe. It's not overly complicated. Christ doesn't include anyone. And particularly on Pride Sunday, this rings true. However, there were two of us interviewing that day, and my fellow interviewee was Derek Emery from Centennial UMC. Derek is a fabulous, compassionate African-American man who works for the Minneapolis School District. And as I recall, he works with high school students. Derek and I are just about as opposite as can be. See, Derek can stand up and deliver a message with relative ease, while I, on the other hand, take days, rolling thoughts through my head, looking up information, like Anus has nine chapters, 146 verses, 4,216 words. When asked what his sermon would be about, Derek answered, he would preach about Amos because the dominant theme of Amos' writing is the unwavering call to social justice as the expression of true faith. In the instant that Mariah asked me which prophet, I knew. I knew this week's message would be about Amos. I just hope I can do Derek proud. First, a little bit about Amos. He was an older contemporary of Hosea and Isaiah. He was active from 760 to 755 BCE. He was from the southern kingdom of Judah, but preached in the northern kingdom of Israel. Amos is the first of the prophets to write down the messages he received and he has been admired for the purity of his language, his beauty of diction, and his poetic art. He wrote at a time of relative peace and prosperity, but during a time of neglect of God's laws. His message was about the increased disparity between the very wealthy and the very poor. The Northern Kingdom of Israel had enjoyed a long period of peace and security marked by a revival of artistic and commercial development. But with that came social corruption and the oppression of the poor and helpless. That sounds familiar. While preaching in the kingdom of Israel, he was denounced by the head priest and advised to leave the kingdom. This prevented him from bringing his message in person, so he wrote them instead. He figured if the people could not hear his message, they could read them. And if they refused to read what he wrote, future generations might still profit from them. I think he was right. There is no earlier instance of a literary prophet, but the example 
he gave was followed by others. It is certain that Isaiah knew of his book, for he follows and even imitates Amos in his early speeches. Our scripture reading, verse 4. This is what the Lord says to Israel, Seek me and live. Verses 10 through 17. There are those who hate the one who uphold justice in the court and detest the one who tells the truth. You levy a straw tax on the poor and impose a tax on their grain. Therefore, you have built stone mansions that you will not live in them. Although you have planted lush vineyards, you will not drink their wine. For I know how many are your offenses and how great your sins. There are those who oppress the innocent and take bribe, bribes and deprive the poor of justice in the courts. Therefore, the prudent keep quiet in such times, for the times are evil. Seek good, not evil, and you may live. When the Lord God Almighty will be with you just as you say he is. Hate evil, love good, maintain justice in the courts. Perhaps the Lord God Almighty will have mercy on the remnant of Joseph. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the, God, the Lord God Almighty says. There will be wailing in all the streets and cries of anguish in every public square. The farmers will be summoned and weep and the mourners will wail. There will be be wailing in all the vineyards, for I will pass through your midst, says the Lord. Let's pause for a moment and realize there's a lot to unpack in those 19 verses, specifically remembering the dominant theme of Amos's writing is an unwavering call of social justice as the expression of true faith in God. God, who is known for faithfulness and mercy, but also justice and righteousness. As Methodists, in our baptismal vow, we commit to reject the evil powers of the world and resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form they present themselves. We are called to witness against racism and abolish inequality and discrimination. Work for just restorative justice speak up against irresponsible use of the earth's resources, be good stewards of God's creation to oppose war and work for peace and justice. Recall Methodists in England played major roles in the abolition of slavery, the creation of the labor movement, the radical reformation of the penal justice and prison code system of the entire British Empire. Methodists not only avoid evil in our lives, we organize and work with others to fight it as it appears in larger society. In John Wesley's Sermon 92, titled On Zeal, he said, Whenever, therefore, one interferes with the other, Works of mercy are to be preferred over work of piety. Even reading, hearing, prayer are to be admitted or postponed at charity's almighty call. Then, when we are called to relieve the distress of our neighbors, whether in body and soul, to this list of resisting evil, injustice, and oppression, I would add the treatment of LGBTQ persons. On June 15th, the Supreme Court ruled that a landmark federal civil rights law from the 1960s protects gay and transgendered workers. Before the 15th, in over half the states in America, our LGBTQ siblings could be fired from jobs simply because of who we love. A little history here, as it's ironic 
that the word sex was included in this law. See, it was added two days before the vote by Virginia Representative Howard Smith, as he voiced a concern that white women would suffer greater discrimination without protection. While I'm personally very pleased and relieved that the, at this ruling, I must admit and saddened that it comes 60 years after the original law was passed. And just as bad, we need, just as bad, we need a law and the Supreme Court to decide if everyone has the same rights. The next question being raised is how will this affect housing, other organizations, and religious employers? And that makes me think of General Conference, General Conference that was moved from May due to COVID-19 and that will now be held in August 2021, still here in Minnesota. How will the landmark decision this month impact the dialogues and the decisions to come? I will continue to pray and hope that our denomination follows the path laid out by our government. My final thoughts as I wrap up today. Recall the scripture reading began with verse four, and this was the verse that had called to me. This is what the Lord says to Israel, seek me and live. Amos says this three times. The first is to seek God and not religion. During this period, the people were seeking and performing sacrifices in temple worship. They weren't seeking God. They were going through the motions and actions, but they weren't getting any closer to God. Rather than seeking God, they were turning injustice upside down. Second is to seek the Lord in humility. God knows our actions. He sees the trampling of the four poor and how they are taxed and monetarily exploited. He sees the people living in luxury and wastefulness. We must seek the Lord in humility because he knows what we're doing and God has counted our sins against us. And finally, seek God in goodness. We cannot have a relationship with God if we love evil and seeking God and good is the only way we can maintain a relationship with God. We can't behave badly, yet claim to be people of God. Those things don't go together. Over 2,700 years ago, Amos preached about social justice. He and the other minor, minor prophets called attention to evil and oppression. They called out and spoke how people were behaving and not following God's laws. 2,700 years later, these words and messages are too similar and maybe a too close for comfort. So my ask today, Hamlin Church, on this Pride Sunday, go for it. seek good, not evil that you may live.
open the doors and go My thanks to everyone who has been a part of leading our worship service today. Special thank you to Sharon Fields for your inspiring and thoughtful message, as well as to Ella and to Emily, to Walker for putting together the video, and to all of our talented musicians for leading us so beautifully as always. Friends, we come now to the time in the service where we take an offering an offering each week that supports the mission and ministry of Hamlin Church as we continue to serve in this community and care for our neighbors as well as the people of this church. I invite you to give generously as you are able in these times, knowing that your gifts, both financial support as well as your service, enable us to be the hands and feet of Christ at work in the world and a witness for justice in our community. There are many ways to give. You can give online, by text, or by mail. Thank you for your generosity. Friends, as we come to the end of our worship service today, I invite you to join us now for Zoom coffee hour as an opportunity to check in and to make new friends and perhaps reconnect with old ones. I also invite you to join us for any of the number of offerings we have in the upcoming week. Perhaps you can would like to join us for our sing-along on Tuesday night at 7 p.m. We also have opportunities for youth and children, including our online VBS that is every Sunday uh, starting at 9.15, and I'm so grateful to our children's ministry team for their excellent work in leading uh, those opportunities. Also, just wanting to let you know that as we continue in this time of the pandemic, your church council is thinking thoughtfully and considerately about how we can return to worship in our beloved sanctuary and when will be the safe and appropriate time to do so. We continue to make uh, adjustments to the building to increase the safety measures that we need for when that time comes. At this point, the council has decided that we will not return for in-person worship until the Sunday after Labor Day. We look forward to being together in person when we can, but for now I give thanks that we have this means of being connected and for the many folks who continue to join in with us and to be connected to our church community and caring for one another in these strange times. Friends, as you go forth into this week, do so with the blessing of the God who calls us into beloved community, the God of justice who desires for all God's children to live abundant life, and the God whose loving creation is our home. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
The postlude today is a jolly piece titled Tubatune in D Major by British composer C.S. Lang.